My name is Sydney Kendrick and thank you so much for joining us today. We are so grateful you are choosing to spend a part of your week with us. I'd like to take a moment and fill you in on a few things that you need to know about here at Lifehouse Fellowship. If you're new here, please go to lifehousefellowship.net and fill out our digital connect card. We'd love to be able to get to know you. To give securely with your mobile device, text LHF to the number 77977 and follow the prompts. You can also go to lifehousefellowship.net and click give, or you can mail on a gift to P.O. Box 81172, Midland, Texas 79708. 
During this season, connection is more important now than ever. Life groups are where faces become friends. It's an opportunity to grow spiritually and relationally. We have life group directories available at the Connection Center. Be sure to grab one today and get plugged in. Mark your calendars and make plans to join us Sunday, June 27th at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. for Senior Sunday. Together, we will celebrate the graduating class of 2021. We can't wait to see you there. If you've been saved by praying the salvation prayer, your next step is water baptism. If you're ready to move forward in your walk with Jesus through baptism, please sign up at the Connection Center to be included in Baptism Sunday, July 11th. We encourage you to invite your family and friends to be a part of this powerful milestone in your life. The best way to stay up to date is to be connected with us through our website, app, and social media accounts. You can check the events calendar, listen to sermons, and so much more. Hey there, everyone. My name is Bailey Sutton. I just want to thank you so much for joining us for our midweek online tonight. And before we get started, I just want to do a few things. And first, I want to ask you to share this stream, share it to your newsfeed, tag a friend in the comments below, or send a link to somebody so that they can watch with you tonight and they can receive with you tonight. And secondly, I just want us to pray. Father, I thank you for your word that you're bringing tonight. Lord, I just pray that if there is anything in our hearts that's going to hinder us from receiving the word that you've brought, Lord, I just pray that in this moment it's removed. Lord, I ask that you speak through me tonight. I don't want to speak through myself, but God, I want you to speak through me. Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me, direct me. Father, I pray that our hearts are open to receive your word, that, that uh, it falls on fertile soil, God. And that your will be done. And in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Well, like I said earlier, my name is Bailey Sutton. Um, if you haven't gotten the chance to get to meet me, you might have seen me on our church announcement videos, or you might see me running around getting equipment prepared for our Sunday services. But I'm actually, I'm the production coordinator at Lifehouse Fellowship. And can I just say, I love what I do. I work alongside some pretty amazing people, some really talented and intelligent um, people on my team. I also have a wonderful group of volunteers that are dedicated to the kingdom. They're dedicated to loving people. Um, and I just absolutely love it. But you know, sometimes in what I do, I'm often behind the scenes. I'm up in the balcony. I'm discreetly making my way in places as my team ushers the spirit of God through the means of serving. The only thing about what I do is I'm often behind the scenes. Often the job of a production person is to not be noticed. Despite so, I will still take every chance I can get to go out and get to meet people and talk with people that I've just met, people that maybe I haven't seen in a while, or people that are in the same job as me. Often at Lifehouse, we're all over the place. We're getting to go and meet a whole bunch of new people and getting to meet a whole bunch of um, production people that are working alongside us and it's such a blessing to not only just get to know them but share wisdom and knowledge with them as well. So often when I am talking to people or I'm talking to people that are in the same line of work as me uh, that often ask uh, how did you get into production? You know, a normal conversation starter but I love when people ask me this question and I'll usually joke around and I say well I married into it when I married the pastor's son, but truly it all started when I was young and I said yes to Jesus for the very first time. And from then I just kept saying yes. Because when I said yes, I said yes to having Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But that yes opened up the door to more than just living with my sins forgiven, more than just saying yes to invite Jesus into my heart. That yes opened the door to his purpose for my life. I couldn't see it. I couldn't even imagine it. But it opened up this whole plan and purpose for my life that if I wouldn't have said yes to, I wouldn't be at where I'm at today. And let me tell you, that first yes, it's beautiful. It's innocent. It's sweet. It's easy to say, Lord, forgive me. But after that yes, 
there is a series of yeses that you will walk down in your walk with Christ. So can I tell you that if you're on your first yes, I want to congratulate you. But this is not going to be your last yes. There's going to be more that's coming in your life. And I say that with a joyful tone in my voice because all these yeses only open up the door to blessing. But I want you to be prepared. The first yes is easy, but the yeses that follow aren't always that way. So have you ever seen the movie Yes Man with Jim Carrey? If you've never seen it, it's about this guy who, and I'm not encouraging you exactly to go watch this or anything. It's pretty good though. It's about this guy who, um, he just kind of has this life that's dull, like he has a job that he doesn't like. He doesn't have a partner. Um, he's always kind of grumpy and nothing good is ever happening to him. And he goes to this seminar where the speaker at the seminar is saying, say yes to everything. And as you can imagine, that leads to some pretty funny events of him saying yes to everything. Um, but by him saying yes to everything, it's really crazy to see how his life changes for the better. His first yes gets people at, at his job liking him, and then from that, like his job actually does better, so the company is like thankful for him, he meets new people, he falls in love, all these great things. And there's a few other things that take him off the path, but in the end, the yes opened up in his life the door to blessing and happiness. So tonight, we're talking about the power of yes. So turn over with me to 2 Corinthians 1, verse 15, under the passage labeled Paul cha Paul's Change of Plans. Now, just a quick recap of what's going on here um, and get you up to speed. Paul is writing to the Gentiles. Okay, first off, to like the church he started. So like imagine having to argue with something you created. So moms, like I get that. I mean, I don't, but I do. Um, anyway, he's having to explain himself. He's coming to receive this special offering um, for the Church of Judea, but some people are upset at him because a while back he had promised that he was going to come and spend over a year with them, um, but his plans changed. His plans changed to align with God's purpose, uh, but everyone is really upset at him because he didn't do as he promised. So they're calling him fickle, or the labeling him the fickle apostle Paul um, because he changes plans. So what we're about to read is Paul's letter of defense, if you if you will, um, to the church. Uh, like if you've ever been in a text debate and you text this really long thing, and then someone's texting back, and like those little um, text bubbles pop up, and you're waiting for their response. This is like kind of how I pictured it, because. Paul is really wise with his words, and it's kind of intense. Okay, so this is what it says in 2 Corinthians 1.15. Because I was confident of this, I wanted to visit you first so that you might benefit twice. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and then to have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I fickle when I intended to do this? Or did I make my plans in a worldly manner so that in the same breath I say both yes, yes, and no, no. But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who has preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. So here Paul is saying, God has sent multiple people to them to demonstrate God's faithfulness, not the faithfulness of man per se. So let's keep reading. It says, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Read that again. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. If God says he forgives you, if God says he heals you, if God says that he will restore you, if he says that he will set you free, if he says that he hears your prayers, that he has a plan and a purpose for your life, the answer is yes. 
In October of 2020, Winston, my husband and I, uh, we got married, so we haven't been married very long, but even in a short amount of time, we've been through joyous times, through scary times, through painful times, and times of just great blessing and abundance in our marriage. And I can say that I joyfully await our future, even though I don't know what it holds. Because when I said yes to him, I didn't just say yes to the good times. I didn't just say yes to a wedding with him when we got engaged. I might have not known what was coming, but I was committed to the person. I wasn't committed to the plan. I was committed to the purpose. Did you know God says yes to you? And when God says yes to you, because He is all-knowing, because He is your Heavenly Father, He already knows all your flaws. He already knows what's to come. He already knows if you're going to mess up, how many times you're going to mess up, how many times you're going to stray away, how many times you're going to call out for Him, how many times you're going to deny Him. He already knows what's going to happen, but He still says yes. Now, I don't know that all of us could still agree to say yes if we knew for example, that our marriage was gonna go through a rocky season. Do we know that we would have said yes to having a dog if we knew that she was gonna tear up our brand new patio furniture? I don't know that I would have said yes to that knowing that beforehand. But God knows everything that's gonna happen and despite every flaw, every mess up, He still says yes to us. In 2 Corinthians 1 verses 21 through 22, it says, now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what's to come. He anointed us. He set his seal of ownership on us, put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what's to come. You know what that means to me? That means man cannot cancel what God has called. There is nothing that man can do. There's nothing that you can do. There's nothing that the government can do or put in place. There's nothing that the doctors can say or make you doubt that will cancel what God has called. God has called you. He calls you to be whole. He calls you to be healed. He calls you righteous. He calls you prosperous. He calls you His, and there is nothing that can ever separate you from being His. Romans 8, 38 through 39, it's one of my very favorite scriptures, and I encourage you to go back and read this in multiple translations. We're going to read it in two. The first one is the New Living Translation, and it says, And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or on the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that was revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm gonna read it in the message translation. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would dare even point a finger? The one who died for us, who was raised to life for us, is in the presence of God at this very moment sticking up for us. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There's no way. No trouble, no hard times, not hatred, not anger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in scripture. They kill us in cold blood because they hate you. We're sitting ducks they pick us off one by one. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, 
thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. God's yes is not fickle. It does not waver. He does not change his mind. He does not promise us this abundant life and hang it over our heads and say, if you're good enough, I'll give you this. He doesn't take it away if we mess up or if we stray off the path. The blessing upon your life is always there. It is always accessible. It always will exist. But the only thing that could ever keep it from reaching you, the only thing that could keep it from taking hold on your life is your yes. God has already promised it to you. And I wish I could say it's that first yes, that one easy yes that will make the exchange and it just makes everything great. But those yeses bring upon greater understanding and greater blessing. Those are often harder yeses that follow. It's those yeses that say, yes, Lord, I promise to live by your word even when the culture around me is going against it. Yes, Lord, I will pray for that person even though that person has hurt me over and over again. It's that, Lord, I say yes to freedom from addiction and I say no to temptation. It's the yes that you say that brings the blessing into your life. You see, I think of it kind of like a stream of water. So that stream of water is always running by you at all times. But if you're wanting to obtain the water, you need a bucket to pick it up and take it with you. So you can't go to the stream without a bucket and expect to leave with water. You have to reach out, you have to say yes, bring your bucket, and take it and have it go into your life. Lastly, I just wanna say this. The part where we miss it, the part where I think as a church and as a people, we have fallen short and we have lost the power of our yes, is when we retract our yes when it's no longer about us, when it's no longer a benefit, a direct benefit to ourselves, when you can't see on the other side, if I do this, I'm gonna get this in return. Like that first yes, we already know what we're signing up for. We're signing up for an eternity with Him. We're signing up to have Jesus in our heart when we accept to have the Holy Spirit into us. We know what we're saying yes to, but the moment we don't know what our yes is holding on the other side and we retract, we lose the power that yes holds. And can I tell you something? <laughs> Your yes is not about you. It's not about what you want. It's about him. You see, if we look at Jesus, he had a beautiful yes, but it wasn't about him. Jesus' first yes was easy, it was fun. It said, yes, Lord, I will make fishers of men. But every yes after that led Jesus to a moment in the garden. In the garden, Jesus cried out to God and he said, Lord, if there is any other way. But he stopped himself and he said, yet your will be done. Jesus was still committed to the first yes that he gave, the yes to having God's plan on his life. He said yes for having God's will be done, but not his will be done. And it's there in the garden where Jesus said yes to us. Jesus said yes to being beaten, to being mocked, to being nailed on the cross and left to die. But he did not do it for the betterment of himself. Jesus said yes for us so that we could be made right with God. Can I tell you something? <laughs> There are souls on the other side of your yes. Someone once asked me, and it was actually, if you've ever um, been with us when Shekinah Glory was here with us, Cindy asked me, she looked me dead in the eye, and she said, are you committed to doing all that you told God that you would do? 
And I'm gonna be honest, I was terrified because if you've ever met her, she's very intense and she does it in love. I absolutely love her, I adore her. I said yes, of course I said yes. Um, and she said, I sure hope you mean that because there are people relying on your yes. And let me tell you, that has resonated with me from that moment. I sat there, I, I thought about what have I promised God I would do? I said, yes, yes, Lord. I thought it was all about me. I didn't realize the weight that my yes carried for everybody around me. And in that moment, I made it a purpose to be more intentional of what I said yes to, not only to, to know what I was getting into, but because I knew my, my yes carried eternity for others. Romans 8, 28 in the New Living Translation says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. The most wonderful thing about your yes, the most powerful thing about your yes, is that it's connected to God. When you say yes, you're saying yes to breaking chains of addiction off people and yourself. You're, you're standing up against generational curses, not only for you to see, but for generations that are so far away that you could probably not even fathom. But because you said yes, you are breaking curses off of them. When you say yes, you're saying yes for your children, their children, and children after them. But the sad thing is, we want that stuff, but we continually make excuses, saying, Lord, my family needs revival. We need you to move in our lives like never before, but 10 minutes of prayer a day, that's just, I'm too busy. I, I can't, I've gotta do this, I've gotta do that, and then I gotta make dinner, and I gotta, my show comes on. And, and can I just say something that was put on my heart earlier? You cannot afford to say no. You cannot afford to not pray into those things, to not say yes to what the Lord is giving you on your life. Because all the Lord has for you is plans of prosperity and abundance. And on the other side of a yes, there's also a no. And where a yes allows a door for things to enter into your life and the lives of those around you, the no closes the door from those things from happening. And I promise that one more episode of Netflix is not worth the eternity of those that you want to see in heaven. I'm so thankful for the yes of those before me, for my parents, for my grandparents, my great grandparents. I've got family all over that were prayer warriors. And because of their yes, my soul was saved. It didn't just affect them. It didn't even affect their immediate family. I never got to meet some of these people, but I know their prayers are still over me to this day. Because of the obedience of somebody else, my soul was saved. So here's the thing. Tonight we talked about the power of yes and just how yes opens the door to blessing to your lives and, and others. No can hinder it. So you have a choice tonight. You can either say yes and not that easy yes. I'm not talking about that one. And if you're on that easy yes, I wanna celebrate with you because that's still a wonderful and beautiful commitment that you're making. But I wanna talk about those harder yeses, those yeses like Jesus in the garden. I'm asking, are you gonna say yes to doing the things you don't want to do, to doing the things that you don't see, how are they gonna benefit me? How are they gonna play out? How is that gonna make a difference in my family? You can say yes to those hard things, or you can say no, and no one will be mad at you. God can't decide this choice for you, to say yes or to say no for the will and the plans and the blessing that he has on your life. That power is in your answer. It's in your yes. But you have to choose it. And I want to take a moment right now. For those of you that maybe this is your first yes, I want to celebrate with you. And I want to take a moment to pray the salvation prayer with you. 
Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Your word says, him that, I should have said, say this with me, huh? Yeah, uh, I'm pulling a tanner. <laughs> Just like, uh, <laughs> try not to laugh. Okay, I'll, I'll, re I'll just restart, okay. And I encourage you to be bold and to say yes. For those of you that maybe tonight you're, you're committed to say your first yes to Jesus Christ, I just wanna take a moment and say the salvation prayer with you. So if you'll just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Your word says, him that cometh to me, I will no wise cast out. So I know you won't cast me out, but you take me in and I thank you for it. You said in your word, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm calling on your name, so I know you have saved me now. You also said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I believe in my heart Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he was raised from the dead for my justification, and I confess him now as my Lord. Because your word says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and I do believe with my heart, I have now become the righteous of God in Christ, and I am saved. If you said that salvation prayer tonight, if you would just let us know in the comments or reach out to us on our social media or on our website at lifehousefellowship.net. We just want to connect with you, to celebrate with you, and to give you a gift and some tools to help you as you begin this journey with Christ. And now tonight, I want to say a prayer for those that have said the first yes, but they may be struggling for the harder yeses in their life. Father God, I just thank you that tonight your word just penetrated into our hearts, God. Lord, I thank you that you're giving us the boldness, that you're taking out fear, that you're taking out selflessness, God, so that we can boldly say yes to all that you have in store for us. Lord, let us understand the weight and the power that we carry behind our choice of yes or no. Let us choose yes. Let us choose the blessing, not only in our own lives, Father, but in the lives of those around us. Let us not keep the blessing from our, our families, God, but let us welcome it with open arms. Let us welcome it with a yes, followed by another yes, Father, and a yes after that. Lord, give us the strength to keep saying yes. Lord, at the times that we've missed it and we're calling out to you saying, Lord, forgive me, you've already said yes, I'm here. You've already said yes, you're forgiven. So Lord, in this moment, if there's anybody that is wanting to recommit their yes to you, that they have the boldness to do so, and Father, that they know that you hear them. Lord, I thank you for sending your son for saying yes to us when we did not deserve it. Lord, with every yes that we say, let us look more like you. Let us know that the weight of our yes carries an eternity for those around us. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us online tonight. If you were blessed by any point in this message, would you please just let us know, um, reach out in the comments below and share this message with your friends. And don't forget to tune in with us next week, online only for our midweek online series at 7 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, or on our very own lhf.online.church. Just remember, great days are here and greater days are ahead. Well, to all of you that joined us today, I want to say thank you for allowing us to meet you where you're at. Have a blessed week, and remember, greater days are ahead.